Um, now you just named, you know, best players and stuff like that. Um, you also was real, real uh, efficient in basketball. So I want to get from you is is um, your starting five, each position in basketball, and then who you consider the best player in East Chicago Central history in basketball. So let's start with point guard. <laughs> oh man, I really don't want no part of this conversation right <laughs> here. Man. Uh, I mean, in East Chicago basketball, man, you know, it's so much competition coming up, growing up in East Chicago, as far as basketball goes, man. So it's real hard to say to say a best guy in one position because it was so many, you know. But I can, I mean, I pretty much can give you who my favorite five were or something like that but cause it was point guard so give me guys you know you know you're a GM okay you're a GM Robert Bell cool okay I'm gonna say cool definitely. point guard as the point guards you know it was a lot of tools on the team and, it, and, it, and it's and it's hard not to say each one more and not put each one more there cause you know the only guy to bring a state championship in the team sport to the schoolhouse got to stand for something. It has to. Gotcha. But I got to say Wayne Jones is my favorite two guard in East Chicago Central history, hands down. Okay. That's that's me personally. No, that's fine. That's me personally. Is, is there a reason why? Definitely because of the game he had. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, in the, in the early 90s, he had all the moves, you know, with the jump shot, you know what I'm saying? Not only could he handle the ball and get to the basket and finish strong, but he could back you off on him and knock down the jump. He had all around game with it. Gotcha. Small four. Charles Wicks. I mean, you know, you got two parks and guys like that, but I don't really remember seeing guys like that, you know what I mean? But I remember Charles Ricks tapping it two times off the knee and dunking on the fast breaks all the time. Death most death. Power four. Carlton Baker, Woody Baker, hands down. I mean, you know, my list might not be as efficient as everybody else's, but I think that's the only name that got to be on the list. Carson Baker's name got to be on the list of top five Chicago players ever. He was down. Yes, sir. Center. Center. Center, center, center. That's one of the problems. Okay. Okay. Is there a reason why? I mean. I mean, I probably believe he might have been the best all-around center to ever come through Chicago because we were a team pretty much always built around guard play. You know, a team that might throw four, about three or four guards out on the floor every single night. Guys who probably were 6'3", six, 6'4", six, like Willie Puckett and Wayne Jackson and guys like that who were forced to play bigger roles because they were the taller guys on the team. You know what I mean? Okay. So. I'm gonna throw some names at you real quick. Mm -hmm. Just give me a quick analysis. Chris Twan Woods. The glue. He, I mean, you know, we we came from the same senior class, and I and I felt like that team. It was no way that team shouldn't have won the state title. But I feel like Chris Woods was the glue of the team. You know, a team loaded with Division One talent. He was the guy that made everything work. He was the guy who kept everything together. When they needed a bucket, he got a bucket. When they needed a defensive stop, he got a defensive stop. When they needed a rebound, he got a rebound. Okay. Bobby Smith. <sighs> that you find. <laughs> you know, he brought he brought uh he brought an intensity to the court that, you know, that everybody loved. Everybody wanted to see Bob come out and see what he was gonna do. Okay. What they call him now, stand him up. They yeah. wanted to see him. We wanted to see Bob stand him up. Yeah. Um, Marcus Jefferson. Man, explosive, man. Six five guard, you know what I'm saying? Explosive, man. Even could shoot the ball, handle the ball. Marcus Jefferson was definitely explosive, but I don't really feel like I don't think he really got the opportunity to shine in East Chicago like he like he uh like he should have, but it was so many players on the team. They, those guys was just uh, out there to win, man. So, you know, it wasn't no way that each and every guy was going to get 20 every night. So, gotcha. But he was one of the most explosive players to come through in Chicago, I believe. Corey Stokes. <laughs> high power. <laughs> high power right there. Corey Stokes was high power in the year. His senior year in Chicago, I think, uh, I think, Actually, if Corey Stokes could have played on that 98 team, if he was here then, 
he would have really helped that team out a lot. But Corey Stokes was electrifying too, you know what I'm saying? He could dribble, he could shoot, he can uh, he can go in the air and go over the top of you. Corey Stokes was very talented. Corey Stokes was one of those guys too. A Jobby Gillis. Uh, Jobby. Man, Jobby could handle it. You know, Jobby could handle that ball like a grown man since we were kids, you know what I mean? I really didn't get the, a chance to see him uh, his senior year because I was off in college. And then my, jun my senior year, he was a junior, you know. He has he had a couple legal problems, so he wasn't out there as much. But the times when he was out there, that made that team so much better. But Jobby Gillis was like a floor general, you know, uh, nine assists to one turnover ratio type of guy, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't going to turn the ball over. It was like a yo-yo to him. Wherever he thought he was going to come back. Gotcha. Now, who's the best player, who's the best basketball player in East Central history, in your opinion? Carlton Baker. Best? Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people he, say... He created so much hype about the game, B. Not only what he did with the numbers, but everybody wanted to come and see what Udi was going to do. <laughs> we gotcha. stood up and screamed his name every night. You yeah. know, understand that, that that never happened. That was the only time in Central history that ever happened where you see a guy sitting on the bench and the whole crowd would stand up and chant his name because we want him in the game. We got to get this guy in the game. Gotcha. What can you say to an athlete who may be in your position? You know, um, play varsity a sophomore, didn't get the touch like they wanted as a junior, dominated senior year, um, played great minutes freshman year, and then, you know, um, and so on. What, 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 what kind of advice can you give athletes? Uh, pretty much just to stay focused and stay confident in yourself. Don't never lose confidence in your own game just because you might not be touching the ball because I feel like that happened to me at times, you know, but I, I had older guys in my corner who kept my spirits high. You know what I mean? But as, t as times, you know, things going to get hard. And you can't you can't fold. You know what I mean? You got to be a man. At a young age, you got to be a man. But keep somebody in your corner to help you out. Like, you even got the Athletes Live Network where you got plenty of athletes who, who will be w ready and willing to give you advice of what they've been through and the things that happen with them. You know, guys like yourself and me, you know. It's no problem to talk to a, a young kid who going through the recruiting process who don't really got nobody to talk to where that was the thing who, where I fell into, fell under where I really didn't talk to anybody about it. And that was my fault. So make sure you don't stay, keep it bottled in, you know. You know, don't be afraid to ask somebody. Don't be afraid to talk to people about what's going on, you know. And don't never let nobody tell you what you can't do. Just only let that fuel the fire for what you will do, you know. So it's times where things gonna get super hard, you know, especially going to college and you know you go out and you on your own and you know things is gonna be temptation, temptation, temptation. You know, you gotta stay strong and be focused and know that you hit it to get a degree first. And then anything after that is just a blessing. Gotcha. Hey Chris man, great interview man. Um pretty soon what I'm gonna do is have a round table of all the great athletes from different areas, man. We're going to just sit down and really talk yeah. it out. And I would love for you to be in that, man. Definitely, definitely. Um, because the old school generation ain't liking you right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they can't stand me right now. They can't stand me. <laughs> hey, man, thanks a lot, man. I really definitely, appreciate this. Definitely. I'm glad you came out to see me, too, man. Uh, no doubt, man. No doubt. Anytime. God bless. This is Athletes Lives Network. Exclusive interviews. Once an athlete, always an athlete.